Okay, so our objective for this video is to show that if we have a sequence of continuous functions uh, which converges to a limit uh, in the metric space uh, CAB with the Suprema metric on, i.e. It, co it converges to another continuous function uniformly, uh, then basically it's also going to converge pointwise uh, to that function, to that limit function. So. Okay, here is our sequence S, which is a sequence of continuous functions. So f1 of x, f2 of x, etc. So it's a sequence of continuous functions. So fi are all elements of CAB. And we are saying that this sequence converges to a limit function Lx in the metric space of um, CAB with the d infinity metric on it. So with the supremum metric here, okay, uh, in that, okay. Uh, so uh, what we want to see is that that implies that this sequence of sequences converges pointwise uh, to this function L of x. Okay, right. Uh, so um, let's recall what it means for it to converge in uh, the metric uh, in the supremum metric. So basically, what we have is here's our picture, A B. So uh, here is our limit function, let's say, Lx, and we have a sequence of other functions which are converging to Lx. And what that means, remember, is that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some point, big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies uh, that uh, the distance in the supremum metric between the function f little n of x and the function l of x, the limit function, is going to be less than epsilon. And we know that uh, what we can do is replace that d infinity with what it is in terms of, uh, it, well, what it is, and uh, that becomes, the su this says, the supremum of the set, uh, the modulus of f n of x minus l of x uh, such that x is an element of the interval a, b is going to be less than epsilon, okay? And if this set is, if the supremum of this set is less than epsilon, then that implies that all the elements of this set are less than epsilon. Therefore, this implies that the modulus of f, n, x minus l, x uh, needs to be less than epsilon for all x is an element of the interval a, b, basically. So for all little x is an element of this interval a, b, the distance between the uh, value that the function f little n ascribes to that point x and uh, the value that the, um, uh, that the limiting function here, uh, that the limit function ascribes to that point x, needs to be less than epsilon. So that means that I can draw this epsilon ribbon around this function lx and I must be able to find you a point, uh, f big N of x, such that if you take any function in that sequence beyond or equal to that term, uh, then it's strictly within that ribbon. Okay, so now let's show that this implies that this uh, sequence of functions converges term-wise, and it should be pretty intuitively obvious. Um, so to prove uh, that it converges term-wise, then what I need to do, in fact, we can use the other side of this paper here. So what to prove that it converges term-wise, what I need to do is uh, show that uh, for all uh, k that you choose within the interval a, b, I need to show that you give me any epsilon, so for all epsilon greater than zero, I need to show that there should exist some point, uh, big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, uh, which could depend on k, uh, so I'll put the subscript k there potentially, um, so n big k, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that uh, if um, little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the modulus of f n k minus l k is less than epsilon. So basically what I'm saying is here we have our uh, our picture. So here is the interval a, b. And I'm sorry, it's on such a slant again. Um, right. And here is the limit function here, which is L of x here. Okay. And uh, and uh, we've chosen some point k, which is an element of this interval a, b. And we want to uh, show that we can find a point in this sequence. We can find uh, a 
big N K, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if you go take any term in this sequence of functions, uh, which is greater than or equal to that term, so beyond or equal to that term, uh, then, uh, so if I just draw out the sequence, so here it is, f1 of x, f2 of x, so basically what I want to do is find you a point in this sequence, f big N k of x, such that if I take any function beyond there in that sequence, uh, then uh, the modulus of the, uh, well, the distance between the value that that function ascribes to the point k and the value that the fu limit function ascribes to k is less than epsilon, i.e. I can find you a point where all of the sequences are within the epsilon interval as far as k is concerned. So they're all, they all ascribe k a value within that interval. Well, my claim is just let big N k equal the big N uh, from... Um, from the supremum metric up here. So from the fact that this sequence of sequences converges in the supremum metric, uh, I can say that, you c okay, use this epsilon that you've given me. I need to, what I need to do is find uh, for any epsilon this big NK. Okay, so what I say is, okay, you've given me some epsilon. I will now apply the fact that this converges in uh, the uniform sense and say that, okay, for that epsilon, I can find your big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, so if I take any sequence, uh, sorry, any function uh, that's uh, beyond this function or equal to this function in the sequence, then it implies that for all x is an element of ab, the uh, function is within that epsilon ribbon. So that certainly means that at k, at k, the distance between f n k minus l k is going to be less than epsilon because k is just a value in this interval. I said that it was going to be true for absolutely any value, so it's certainly true for that value that you gave me initially, k. So basically, whatever epsilon you give me and whatever k you choose within the interval a, b, I can always find you a point in this sequence of functions uh, such that uh, if you take that function or go beyond that term in the sequence of functions, uh, then uh, that uh, the d distance between the value that that function ascribes to the point k and uh, and the uh, value that the limit function ascribes to k is going to be less than epsilon. And the reason that you can do that is simply because if it converges uniformly, I can actually find your point big N in this sequence of functions where it's true not it's not it's true that the distance between the value that the function ascribes to a point and the value the limit uh, ascribes to the point is less than epsilon not just for some silly value k but for all values uh, in the interval a b so that's uh, why uniform convergence implies uh, that um, that uh, the um, sequence uh, that you know that, that this sequence of functions does in fact converge to LX pointwise. So basically, if you have a sequence of functions which you know converges in this uh, in this metric space CAB with this supremum metric on it, uh, and you know it converges to something, you just don't know what it is. Then the way in which you can work out what it converges to is you can take its pointwise limit, and that's a far easier thing to do because then you're just dealing with sequences of real numbers rather than sequences of functions. Uh, so basically, if you have a sequence of functions which converges in the metric space CAB with the uh, with the supremum metric on it, then it will converge to its pointwise limit. No ifs, no buts. Uh, there's only one thing it converges to. So it does still converge to the intuitive thing, basically, which is the pointwise limit. The pointwise limit, by the way, is the is what you'd if you were uh, going to define a theory of how to how function what it means for functions to converge. Uh, pointwise limits is what you come up with. This is a stronger notion. Uniform convergence is stronger than pointwise convergence. If you have basically, if this is the set of all se sequences of functions which converge pointwise then a subset of them will converge uniformly as well as converging pointwise, but they will still converge to the same limit as they converge to pointwise. So basically, if you know, if you have a sequence of functions which converges uh, uniformly, then you can always work out what they're going to converge to uh, by just taking their pointwise limit. Okay, uh, right, now let's discuss uh, how uh, the other way round doesn't necessarily hold true, i.e. if you have a sequence of functions which converges pointwise, so let's say we have a sequence S, uh, let me get rid of that now, let's say we have a sequence S, uh, which is uh, f1 of x, 
f2 of x, f3 of x, etc. And this converges pointwise to Lx, then that does not necessarily imply that it converges uniformly to L of x. So it does not necessarily imply that it converges in the metric space CAB uh, with, um, with the uh, supremum metric on it. So we're going to assume that all of these functions are still elements of CAB. Okay, right. Uh, so let's, let's, let's show this. Uh, so what does it mean to converge pointwise? It means that for all k is an element of the interval a, b, and for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N, which is an element which is dependent on k, and that's the crucial bit, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N k, uh, it implies that the distance uh, between the uh, value that uh, the function fn ascribes to the point k minus the dis uh, minus the uh, sorry the distance between the value that the function fn ascribes to k and the value of the f that the function l ascribes to k the limit pointwise limit uh, function converges to uh, the pointwise limit uh, function ascribes to k is going to be less than epsilon so basically if we draw a picture here is the interval a b here is your limit function, your pointwise limit function. Basically, you pick a value of k, I can f and draw an epsilon interval around the value lk. So that lk is the value that the function uh, l, the limit pointwise limit function, ascribes to the point k. You draw an epsilon interval around that. So the interval lk uh, minus epsilon to lk plus epsilon, so you draw an epsilon interval around there, I can find you a point, uh, a point in this sequence of functions, so some f n k, such that if you go take any function in this sequence of functions greater than, uh, well, either equal to that term or beyond that term in this sequence of functions, then all of them, absolutely all of them in the tail end basically, are going to ascribe a value to k that is within epsilon of lk, i.e. is within this interval here. So basically, if I draw one of them, it's going to look something like that. The value it ascribes to the point k is going to be within this interval basically. And you can do that no matter what epsilon is. Okay. Um, the problem is that you can do this for all k. The problem basically arises that the nk's, uh, if we, for instance, give a get another k, let's have a over here, you can again uh, draw an epsilon interval around uh, that, around the point la, basically, and uh, you can come up with, so you can find some natural number, n big A now, so it's dependent on the point, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if you go to that point in the sequence, so here is f1, here is f2, and I'm going to drop the of x, if you don't mind, and you go all the way along to f n a, basically, and basically if you take any function in the tail end there, then, um, all of the then all of then all of those uh, sequence all of those functions in this tail end of this sequence are going to ascribe to the to the point a a value that is within uh, this uh, epsilon interval around the point l a basically okay uh, so the problem as we see many times with uh, sequence spaces is that these ends are not necessarily going to be bounded. Now, let's review what we need in order for uniform convergence to happen. For uniform convergence, so for uniform convergence, what do we need? So for uniform convergence, what we need is that uh, if we have our sequence here, f1 of x, f2 of x, etc. If it were to converge uniformly to this uh, pointwise limit Lx, then what would that mean? That would mean that whatever epsilon you give me, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that, and now rather than going through the d infinity, da, 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 we know that that boils down to the fact that uh, the value of the function f little n evaluated at x 
x minus the um, value of the function lx evaluated at x, uh, l evaluated at x, the modulus of the difference between them has to be less than epsilon, and that has to be true for all x is an element of a, b. So recall the picture, basically. If this is the interval a, b here, and this is the limit function here, so this is L of x, then I need to be able to draw an epsilon ribbon around that function Lx, like so, and I need to be able to find you a point in this sequence of functions. So I need to be able to find you an f big Nx, such that if you take any function f little nx, which is in the tail end of this sequence, so is this term or beyond that term in the sequence, uh, then it has to be completely within this ribbon, which implies uh, that all of them, all for absolutely every single point, x is an element of a, b. All of them, the values that this function f little n ascribes to that value, the distance of that value from the value that uh, the function l ascribes uh, to the value x, that has to be less than epsilon, i.e. the value that the function ascribes to the point x has to be within the epsilon interval around the point that l, uh, uh, the function l ascribes to x, and that has to hold for all the points in AB. Now, for every single individual point in AB, I can find you some point uh, n sub k, uh, so if k is an individual point in this interval AB, I can find you, point-wise convergence tells me that I can find you some n sub k such that this is true at the point k. The problem is that can I find a single n I can't find, basically, I can't necessarily, I, I might be able to in certain cases, I can't necessarily find you, necessarily find a big N which is greater than N sub K for all K is an element of AB. And basically that's what you would need to be true, because you'd need to go to a point in this sequence of functions such that after that point, all, this is true for all x is an element of a, b. Now, for every element in, uh, is an element of a, b, I can find you a point in this sequence such that it's true at that specific point. But can I find, basically, um, let me give you, let me draw it out. Um, can I find, so if I draw out the sequence here, uh, and this angle that this camera is at is really annoying me. It's all been slanted. Right, okay, that's better. So, if we have this sequence of functions here, here is f1 of x, then what you can imagine doing is uh, you can find f sub n, uh, fn, uh, now let's give an example. So, we can start off with k of x, and then somewhere maybe along from that there'll be f sub n a of x, and basically what you need to do is you need to find some f big n of x, such that that f big n of x is beyond absolutely all of these where these where you have one of these for every single real number in the interval a b because you need for absolutely every real number in the interval a b the value that the function ascribes um, to that point uh, to be within the epsilon interval around the value that the limit function ascribes to that point. And basically you can't assure me that you can find a big N which is greater than all of these NKs uh, for all K in, is, in an, uh, is in the interval AB. Remember the NK is the point in this sequence of functions after which it's true that um, and the function will ascribe the value k, a value that's within the uh, epsilon interval around the value that the limit function ascribes the value k. But you cannot necessarily get a number that's bigger than that for all, for all k as an element of a, b, basically. And that's the sad truth that, uh, you know, you could pick some k uh, in here, and this n sub k might be a thousand. You that might then pick another one, a, and n sub a is a million. You might pick another one, b, no, I won't use b, uh, d, let's say, uh, and n sub d is tr five trillion. It can go on and on, and there's uncountably infinitely many of these that you have to somehow make big n greater than all of them in order if you want this to be this statement to be true for absolutely all x is an element of a b because remember it's only true at a specific point k after you get past this point n sub k and that's the problem that's why uh, it uniform uh, sorry pointwise convergence does not necessarily imply uniform convergence